The Late Show. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm your host, Stephen Colbert, and it is... It's Friday. That is, you could... You, yeah, Friday audiences, you can hook jumper cables up to them. Yeah. They got so much energy. And run this lighting grid right here. That's clean energy. That is clean so energy, energy right there. It's that is renewable. Of course, it's our, uh, it's our last show before Halloween, which is on Sunday. And this year, the scariest people coming to your doors are the ones who refuse to wear a mask. <laughs> um, I'm already in my costume. I'm already in my costume. I'm going either as a Brooks Brothers mannequin and open mic night, <laughs> or conservative pundit and host of The Colbert Report, Stephen Colbert. <laughs> He did not age well. <laughs> I hope everyone's weekend is getting off to a great start. I know Joe Biden's is, because earlier today, our nation's second Catholic president met with Pope Francis in the Vatican. Joe even prepped to meet with the Holy Father. He learned how to say no malarkey in Latin. <laughs> Quid malarquis non est? <laughs> but it could get a little awkward, since Biden's positions have also been at times, at odds with Catholic teaching, such as his early support for same-sex marriage. Now, I'm serious, folks. <laughs> of course. Look, I said, I told Barack. I told Barack, I said, of course I'm pro-same-sex marriage. Jack and Jill's the same as Jack and Jack or Jill and Jill. <laughs> Whatever goes on up the hill is none of my business, for God's sake. <laughs> just don't... <laughs> got it. You just got it. Just, just don't come tumbling down and break your crown. <laughs> Good teeth cost a fortune, and I'm living proof. <laughs> now, it was actually me. Biden wasn't here. <laughs> and if you can't get enough of the Pope, good news. Just like everything else these days, the Pope is coming to Netflix. Because we recently learned that Pope Francis, Martin Scorsese, and Jane Goodall spoke to young filmmakers about love for a documentary available on Netflix on Christmas Day. Christmas Day, Your Holiness. <laughs> kind of stealing your boss's thunder there, aren't you? <laughs> Everyone remember. Everyone remember. Jesus is the reason for the season, and he loves you all. Speaking of love, I'm featured in this new Netflix doc. <laughs> Check it out. Smash like and subscribe. <laughs> There's, that's my Argentinian Italian <laughs> accent. Hey, there's big news out of the Northwest where police in Seattle went undercover to break open a Lego trafficking ring. <laughs> and they had, they had to go undercover. Let me show you why. You can't just sneak up on the Lego guys, okay? You can't sneak up on them because their heads turn all the way around <laughs> and they can see you coming. And if they know you're following them, they'll just take off their hair add new hair, and then they'll just go, hey, wait, I'm not a criminal, I'm Gandalf. <laughs> wait, what's, what's going on? What's going on? Uh, here's how it went down. The officers visited a store to offer stolen merchandise to the owner. Then they asked him, what else do you need? To which the owner allegedly replied, Lego sets, the big ones. <laughs> That's right, I need Lego sets, the big ones. I'm talking the Death Star, Hogwarts, the cafe from Friends. For some reason, that's a Lego set now. <laughs> I guess the demo's getting older and more sophisticated. <laughs> they ended up busting uh, the owner after selling him an illicit Baby Yoda Lego set, <laughs> which is why the police called the sting, and this is absolutely true, Operation Mandalorganized Retail <laughs> Theft. <laughs> yes. Topical. And, and, and if the stolen Legos had crossed state lines, the thief may also have faced Boba Federal charges. <laughs> of course, as we get older, we stop playing with Lego spaceships. And if you're a billionaire, you start playing with real spaceships. <laughs> and I've got the latest about orbital real estate in tonight's edition of Space News. <laughs> Space for Rent Edition.
Uh, it turns out NASA is looking to replace the International Space Station because the 20-year-old lab is showing signs of its age. Yes, the shielding's wearing thin. Sometimes the thrusters misfire. <laughs> and they still got a six CD changer. <laughs> NASA's been flooded with space station proposals. The latest comes from Jeff Bezos' Blue Origin, home of the famous penis rocket. <laughs> And I'm being told we have an artist rendition of the docking port on their new proposed space station. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's... That's... That's a George O'Keefe painting. That's a George O'Keefe. I don't know how that got up there. Here's the actual artist's rendering of what the inside will look like. Oh, that's nice. Bezos plans to give a vacation to the woman from the mud flap. If you're looking to rent a ride on Elon Musk's rocket, I've got some good news, because SpaceX claims to have fixed its leaky toilet ahead of their upcoming launch. You see? Yes, it's worth celebrating. <laughs> Evidently, on the last launch, a tube came unglued and spilled urine onto fans beneath the floor. The fans were blowing urine air everywhere. So if you ever want to feel like an astronaut, just walk over a New York City subway grate. <laughs> but just, mm. Marilyn Monroe. Seven-year itch. Oh. oh. But from here on out, the P won't hit the fan because they've come up with a permanent fix. SpaceX has welded on the urine flushing tube, <laughs> finally allowing astronauts once and for all to boldly go in sports news. <laughs> Took a second. <laughs> I like the space. Takes a that. second. Oh, but that's a... In sporting news, back in July, the men's baseball team, the Cleveland Indians, announced they were changing their name to the Cleveland Guardians, a reference to the city's iconic landmark, the Guardians of Traffic. The Guardians of Traffic, of course, are named after every dad at a baseball game. Okay, seventh inning, bases loaded. Grab your stuff, kids. We're beating traffic. We'll catch the end of the game on the radio. Remember, dad's favorite sport. Dad's favorite sport is being at home lying on the couch. <laughs> the team switched to the Guardians after a lengthy search to replace their old racist name. But turns out, they didn't search lengthily enough because now they're being sued by a roller derby team named the Cleveland Guardians. <laughs> Do we really need to take this to court? I say settle it like true sportsmen. Guardians versus Guardians. <laughs> Baseball players get bats and steroids. Roller derby guys get roller skates and a lot of questions from their family. <laughs> now, really, that's a job? That's a job? Really, that's a job? You, you went to law school. Now I'm a sports fan. I know baseball is the one where you get an ice cream and a tiny helmet. <laughs> but these, these roly derbers have a strong argument because their team has called itself the Cleveland Guardians since 2013. So the former Cleveland Indians are just continuing their tradition of stealing a name from people who were here first. <laughs> now, they... You gotta, you gotta, you just gotta, gotta put it out there. You gotta put it out there. Like the baseball team's case is not looking good. According to the lawsuit, the baseball team knew that the roller derby team already had the name Cleveland Guardians. So to hide their plan, they allegedly made secret trademark filings on the small island of Mauritius. Reminds me of that famous scene from Field of Dreams. If you build it, make sure to secretly trademark it on the small island of Mauritius. Who knows what the judge will decide? <laughs> but I say there's room for compromise here. In exchange for the name, baseball has to give Roller Derby its most famous song. John? Take me out to the Derby. These coins are allowed. Buy me some peanuts and Cracker Jacks. Or whatever they sell there for snacks for its roll. Shove punch at the Derby. No skating backwards, I think. Cause there's one, two, Three bloody teeth on the old skate.